so the field of Aboriginal settler relations uh, has changed dramatically in the last 30 years, I would say. Uh, up until 30 years ago, the dominant motif in the literature was um, Indigenous people were uncivilized and we brought them, uh, we settlers, Europeans, brought them, you know, Christianity, we brought them the rule of law, we brought them, you know, government, uh, we, uh, you know, um, broke up the kind of slavery systems that they had in their culture. And, uh, and they were an inferior people then, and you know, they're still struggling today, which is explained by the fact that they were inferior people, and we're doing our best to help them out. That's kind of, if you read it, picked up the Canadian history book from 1970, that's more or less what you would see. Um, thanks, I think, in part uh, to some American um, uh, land claims that the indigenous people started to bring in the States in the 1970s, uh, and then started to ask academics for uh, the help for the research to prove that they existed, they'd lived there for a long time, uh, that they had traditional practices. Um, academics started to get more engaged in, in this field and I think um, they, they call the literature that has arisen since then the, the New Indian History. It's an American word, New Indian History. Uh, and um, the New Indian History really takes, uh, I guess, indigenous civilization seriously and as equivalent to European civilization and says, um, you know, um, two different worlds came together. Uh, one of them, um, in the early days on this first context, we'll take the Vikings who arrived in 1000, they didn't survive in North America because they didn't adapt the European, the indigenous technology and they didn't, um, they didn't integrate with the indigenous population. Uh, when Europeans came back again after Columbus in the 1500s and 1600s, uh, the ones that survived were the ones that worked with the local indigenous people. Until such time as they developed a critical mass and were able to survive on their own. And at that point, when indigenous peoples, uh, you know, no longer become necessary ally, but become an obstacle to Europeans sort of spreading over the continent, um, you know, we see a history of conflict. But the new Indian history say, say, takes that perspective that, in fact, rather than bringing civilization to this um, empty land, uh, this was an act of colonialism and largely, in the big picture, theft. We're coming to your land, we say you're not using it properly, we're going to take it. And so the new ethno history, um, or the, the new Indian history, I call uh, what's developed since then the new ethno history. Ethno history is um, a merger of historical research using the documents that are available to us, uh, but they're not, we don't have documents from the indigenous side. That's, you know, a huge problem in the field. So ethno history says we also have to um, use other methods, uh, which we're going to borrow from ethnology, from anthropology including uh, oral history and listening and paying attention to the oral legends, oral myths, oral histories uh, from uh, First Nations. And so that's been, been one of the huge shifts uh, in the field is that um, now we actively seek out um, evidence for what Indigenous people were doing, what they were thinking, how they were responding. And so uh, taking oral history seriously has been a huge shift in the field trying to understand how oral history works because it doesn't work the same way as written history has been a big uh, feature. Um, getting rid of this notion that Indians were at one time kind of pure Indians and when Europeans arrived that um, there was some and they borrowed some European technology that no longer they're no longer Indians anymore they're somehow contaminated by that. Um, we've started to appreciate that all cultures are in a process of change and, and flux and if, if indigenous people are no longer authentic because they, uh, I don't know, they, they gave up their furs and are wearing blankets, then Europeans are no longer Europeans because they gave up their heavy longboats and started to use canoes. You know, I mean, uh, cultures are inherently dynamic. Indigenous people were boring from each other and uh, we can see archaeologically evidence of, of culture change up and down uh, Aboriginal North America long before Europeans arrived. So Europeans just in a way brought um, an acceleration of, of cultural change and adaptation. And so uh, the new ethno history sees that as not a negative thing but as an as a, uh, inevitable result of cultures coming together. And, and what I think is a really interesting direction in, in, in the field now is 
um, we are taking this idea of ethno-history, this idea of looking at uh, cultures who didn't leave us a, an oral or a written record, uh, and uh, which we think are kind of strange and peculiar, and their customs are things that we have to translate and understand. We're taking that lens and now applying it to the Europeans from the same period, and saying, whoa, geez, those guys were, you know, they, their Christianity was something that they kind of, you know, was right front and center. They saw the world through a spiritual lens too. Everything, you know, for many Europeans in the 19th and 18th century was, you know, God's will or, um, and, we, you know, most of us don't think that way uh, now. So to get inside the head of Europeans in that period and through the 19th and early 20th century, I think requires the same kind of skills and techniques that we've been applying because we thought they were so strange to us, to indigenous people. But there's a realization that, that um, the Europeans from that era were just as foreign to us or almost as foreign. And that uh, the records that they left us, which we have, we have you know, believed to be truthful, these written letters and diaries and stuff, are no more truthful and no less truthful than oral histories and stories that are passed down from indigenous people. So it's an exciting field to be in these days because uh, we're, we're just kind of shifting our views and uh, finding new sources of evidence and uh, rethinking some of the mythologies that uh, you know, surround our, our nation and our province and even our everyday life.